focusing on the time. Now we invite uh, Solomon, Solomon South from Oxford Policy Management, India. Uh, he's going to talk about community health workers' involvement in COVID-19 response, understanding their roles, experiences, challenges, and adaptive strategies across six countries. Solomon holds a PhD in public health and policy from the London School of uh, Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and a Master of Science in Anthropology from Savitriba Thul Pune University at India. He has applied uh, all this knowledge in a different, different researches that he has made at India, and recently he has developed an interest in health policy and system research, particularly using anthropological lens to study complex organizational relations and to contribute to health system strengthening by focusing on the health workforce and community engagement. Solomon? So once again, good afternoon. I'm Solomon from India, and at this moment I'm representing Rebuild for Resilience and Oxford Policy Management. I do hope by now you have got some time to visit our stall on the fourth floor. If not, please do visit our stall, uh, Rebuild for Resilience, and uh, get to know the wonderful work that we as a team are doing. So in today's presentation, I'm going to talk about community health experiences during COVID-19. So Julia has already uh, made my job much easier because she has already touched the nerve of, uh, of the entire CHW experience. But I'll be talking more from the systems perspective and bringing some more system level issues over here. So the work basically uh, builds on the report supported by Oxford Policy Management. And in fact, there were useful learnings around CHWs and uh, COVID-19 experience. And there was a need to understand what is the broader picture. And we felt like doing a synthesis of these findings and provide a cross-country comparison and know a bigger picture and broader learning and enable wider dissemination. We were guided by these four broad research questions. And when it comes to the findings, we will, we will try to understand the findings from these broader uh, research questions. Well, as I said, like it's a evidence synthesis, and it brings 18 reports from six countries, 18 studies contributing to 25 reports across six countries, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sierra Leone, Kenya, and Ethiopia. Mostly, it was qualitative in nature. When it comes to analysis, analysis, we relied on the thematic analysis. Well, as I uh, said, the reports came from various sources. One of them was the Maintenance Project, which is a FCDO-funded research program. And it has been implemented by a consortium led by Oxford Policy Management. And the main agenda for uh, the primary objective is what maintenance can learn from COVID-19 around the national ability to respond to the shock. We also had reports from India, Bangladesh, and Ethiopia uh, from the um, opium studies. Well, I just want to make a point over here that not all reports had CHW and COVID-19 as a major focus. There were reports which were talking about health systems resilience. There were reports talking about wider health system issues. But nonetheless, each ev and every report had something to say about community health workers and their experiences in COVID-19. Well, sitting in this room, we are quite familiar and we know community health workers do play a critical role in our health system. But when it comes to the cadres, it varies across countries. Some are regular, some are contractual, some are paid, some are salaried, some are paid honorarium. And so there is a variation across these things. In most countries, the majority of these CHWs are female. So what does our findings help us understand this afternoon? So in all the countries, CHWs took on new roles starting from identification and surveillance, screening of people with COVID-19 symptoms, contact tracing, and et cetera. But in addition to that, they were also act involved in other activities, such as providing rations to the household. Let's go to the first research question about the support. When it comes to the support, CSW receives varied form of support for their roles in COVID-19. This includes support from health system, support from families, peers, and the community. Well, as we see from the health system, 
all reports did say that trainings were conducted for community health workers, but there were also gaps noted. For example, in Kenya, not everyone had smartphones, or in India, there was a lack of follow-up training. Similarly, there was a lot of challenges with the PPE kits and the distribution. There was insufficient PPE kits for the frontline workers across all countries. There were issues of quality and quantity. PPE shortages partly reflected system constraints in providing PPE kits. It also reflected issues of distribution. In India, we also realized it reflected gender health uh, hierarchies in distribution. For instance, like male doctors were preferred when PPE kits were given as compared to the nurses or community health workers. So there was inadequate PPE left, inadequate PPEs left CHWs anxious and vulnerable to infection. CHWs voiced a sense of disempowerment and neglect and described themselves as small people or lowest in the run for the PPE distribution. Well, across some countries, financial uh, schemes were already introduced and there was some moment to support these CHWs. However, we also noted that there were gaps in implementing these financial schemes. For instance, in Ethiopia, CHWs used own money to share COVID-19 information by phone without being paid any compensation. When it comes to managerial support, we know that during COVID-19, the general health services suffered a lot and the caseload of other general services came down. But managers came with a supportive thing to the CHWs and they helped them to report whatever was like the cases at that moment of time and ensured the timely submission of the reports. Well, when it comes to the support from families, in India, some CHWs relies on their husbands and relatives to provide transport to facilita facilities and communities because the transportation was not available. When it comes to peer support, some CHWs worked additional hours to cover for their fellow CHWs who could not come on time to their duty hours. Similarly, community uh, support was strongly seen in an Indian scenario not only in terms of supporting the routine activities of CHWs, but also in other social activities such as preparing or stitching masks for community health workers. Well, that, that's a good story about the support from the system or the community or the family for the peers. But community health workers always face several challenges. And out here also, we see they had faced several challenges at system level, and other issues. For example, health system factors. So at the system level, we see that the COVID-19 added to their existing workload. A point to be noted over here, that this existing workload or the increase in workload added an additional stress to their work. And I, I think Julia has already talked about stress very nicely because it not only had them to work there, but it was a struggle to balance between the domestic responsibilities and the routine health services responsibilities. Similarly, when it comes to medical supply, there were disruptions to medical supply chains that led to shortages, often exacerbating existing difficulties. For example, Bangladesh lockdown hindered transport of medical supplies needed by CHWs, and in India, lockdown disrupted supply of the rations distributed by CHWs. Furthermore, we know that there were restrictions in terms of social gatherings, that also affected the CHW services. Even restrictions on gathering, some community-based activities could not take place or were more difficult. Wider movement restrictions and impacts of travel also contributed to the challenges faced by community health workers. Well, furthermore, at the community level, we see that travel restrictions affected the demand side of health services. People were not able to access services. Community fears of infection and quarantine showed reluctance to attend or allow CHW services or allow them to visit their homes. Community concerns about stigma affected community trust in CHW and CHW's ability to perform their tasks. Community concerns about infection even led to stigmatization of CHWs and aggression in certain cases. Well, but CHWs, are innovators. They are the resilient workers. The system doesn't crash down. They want to make the system run. 
and they come up with innovative adaptive strategies. And these are the strategies that we have seen. So telemedicine was a resort in most of the cases. Similarly, provision of medical supplies in advance, for instance, in Bangladesh and India, we saw that TB patients were provided with advanced doses so that, you know, like when lockdown is there, they shouldn't complain about having no medicines with them. Similarly, we saw service delivery location. There was a change in service delivery locations. Schools were used instead of health centers because schools had more spaces. In Pakistan, we saw, you know, like pregnant women were provided services through the CHW homes. So there was a change in adaptation from moving from the health center to using home as a desktop. Similarly, structure of service delivery. Interestingly, we saw in Ethiopia, some villages, or, uh, some villages were divided into smaller units to avoid the challenges of social gathering. Well, in addition to this, we saw there was a personal commitment with CSWs working longer hours. They want to balance the routine services at the same time, the COVID-19 services. Similarly, their personal values were seen in terms of using personal finances for purchasing their own PPE and covering extra transport costs and providing support to family and community members by distributing rations from their own pocket. Finally, what do we conclude? Multiple CHW contributions to COVID-19 response, which cannot be ignored at any cost. CHW work and well-being is affected by health system factors, wider government decisions, gender hierarchies, and community relationships. Well, inadequate support and other challenges affect CHW's well-being, stress and fear already covered by Julia. Varied experiences between CHW carriers and individuals, more work needed on heterogeneity. Finally, I would say, CHW needs a wider recognition within the policy cycle. CHW needs adequate resources, managerial and financial support to support their contribution and protect their well-being. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, fellow.